Medical Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political uh, the East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Totoetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Mwisabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajiado County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM. And in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children, and particularly the marginalized, as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. Uh, the East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Totoetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Mwisabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajedo County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM. And in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children, and particularly the marginalized, as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, 
and therefore it, it was established to stand in the gap, providing for children who are marginalized parts of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Masabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajiado County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGO, and in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are marginalized parts of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Masabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajadu County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM and in the long run we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are marginalized parts of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Masabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajadu County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM and in the long run we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. 
This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference. on anti-FGM and in the long run we uh, The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was, it was established to stand in the gap, providing for children who are a marginalized parts of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Monsabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajiado County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM, and in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Monsabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajiado County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM. And in the long run, we tend to see that 
that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Masabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajedo County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM and in the long run we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Masabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajedo County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM. And in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized, as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. 
The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social and cultural rights and therefore it, it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Mansabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajiado County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM, and in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Mansabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajiado County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM and in the long run we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. Civil and political rights were given more preference than uh, the East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap, providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Mansabit, Kajiado, and Garissa.
Islands. Our work, especially in Kajadu County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM and in the long run we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. The East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education.
Uh, welcome to the this uh, auspicious occasion, which happens to be the annual the launch of the report for the East African Center on Human Rights, Each Rights, uh, where we have uh, both physical and uh, uh, we have those who are here physically with us, but we also have some people who are online. So I'd kindly request uh, those who are online to switch on their videos so that they may be able to participate uh, in this event. So uh, without far, much further ado, as is uh, common in these uh, parts of the world, we'll begin with a word of prayer. And then from there, we'll, uh, I'll take you through the program so that we can proceed with this uh, occasion. So let us pray. Uh, maybe we can stand. Uh, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the blessings of the East African Center on Human Rights. We want to thank you, Lord, for all our partners, all our friends, all our beneficiaries. And on this auspicious occasion, we ask you to bless this event so that it may proceed smoothly and maybe for the better good of the organization and the people that we serve. We ask of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sante Sana. So, uh, my first order of business, I'm your MC, Master of Ceremony. My name is Marcelino Waitakathuku. I'm a project manager with the East African Center for Human Rights, otherwise known as Each Rights. And uh, I first of all would like to uh, acknowledge the presence uh, of the, some of our guests who are here with us today. Uh, normally we say uh, charity begins at home, so I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the founding trustee, uh, Gilbert Onyango. Uh, can we Gilbert? Also want to acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Sharon Makoriwa. I hope I pronounced that properly. Uh, who is here representing our chief guest, uh, Honorable Otiende Amolo, the MP for Arieda, uh, Sharon. I also want to acknowledge the presence of our CEO, uh, Dr. Judith Olo, we normally call her Daktari. Uh, there are those who have joined us currently, we are waiting more. Uh, Daniel Shikoli from the Kenya Parliamentary Caucus is here with us, Daniel. Nice meeting you, eh? I only see you in meetings. Eh? <laughs> uh, we have got Nyangori Ohenjo from the Center for Minority Rights and Democracy Semiride. Uh, Robbie Chacha, Accountability Fund Council. Hey, Robbie, welcome. Uh, Joshua Ogulu, Joshua from Map Kibera. Yes, and then uh, moving uh, online. I'm seeing quite a number of uh, people here. I'll still come to the staff, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, there are those who are here online with us. Uh, I'm uh, Christina Lai, a board member, is joining us virtually. Uh, we've got a friend from the University of Stirling, Damien Eton. We've got uh, a lady, distinguished lady called Eni Kempa Erodanga. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Eric Kinaga, Faith of Yambo. Joseph Moduri, Laura Bailey Svensson, uh, Maurice Mutisia, and uh, I'm also seeing Titus. So currently, we'll keep updated. Uh, opportunity to acknowledge the staff who are here with us, uh, starting with our very able finance. <laughs> And my good friend Simon Samantha, hi. <laughs> Fatu Ibrahim, Harry, and Cloud Candem. There are those who will be joining us uh, shortly. I've also seen we have been joined by two of my very good friends. Um, you know, sometimes with the mask, when one wears the mask. <laughs> I'm unable to tell exactly who it is, but I'll acknowledge you in due course. So, uh, so welcome once again to this occasion. And uh, basically, we, we, we have a program which we are following. We are going to have opening remarks by the Chief Executive Officer, 
after which we are going to have a short virtual presentations of the programs that are done by each rights. We're going to have two short films and uh, I'll be introducing Cloud to take over at that stage. And then I'll keep you updated. After that, we're going to have uh, a few speeches and then the keynote address. And finally, the official launch of the annual report. So at this juncture, I really want to, I wish to welcome our Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Judith Olo. Thank you very much, um, Marcelino. To the representative of um, the Honorable Chief Guest for today, uh, Dr. Hon uh, Dr. Otiende Amolo, MP of Rarieda, Sharon Makorewa. To our partners, Eric Development Partners, Wellsprings, OSF. To Friends of Each Rights, that is the UN Office of the High Commission for Human Rights, the Republic of the Royal Embassy of Netherlands, Save the Children Plan, TDH, and the Law Society of Kenya. Our CSO partners, good afternoon, or is it evening? Good evening. Um, it is indeed our great pleasure to welcome you to this particular occasion that is the launch of each East African Center for Human Rights, popularly known as Each Rights, very first annual report. We have been around for several years. It is just last month that we marked our 11th year of existence. And so this is one of the milestones that we are happy to celebrate. We acknowledge the presence of our friends, our partners, our supporters online, as well as you for making time to be part of this particular meeting today. Now, the East African Center for Human Rights um, work is known. Our work is known both uh, locally and internationally. Uh, those of you who know about us uh, know us about know about us about um, to be dealing mainly in child protection, which uh, includes um, advocacy against female genital mutilation, as well as um, early child marriage on the one hand. And on the other, we have been very vocal under the right to education where our mainstay is um, advocacy against privatization of public schools and also ensuring that urban marginalized communities have access um, to affordable schooling and school facilities. So we have also done some work on health, but we are open to doing a, a lot of work here because um, especially at this moment of the COVID-19, we realize that health uh, has a big gap. Just recently, um, there was uh, some news on the, on the papers about the government um, considering removing syringes from the tax bracket. And that is one of the things that we are interested in together with our partner Semiride and we are looking at it. At the international level, our presence has been felt uh, given the observer status that we have at the African Committee of Experts for the Rights and Welfare of the Child. Um, we are also in the process of obtaining um, um, observer status at the African Commission. And these status, we intend to continue to use them to take up those spaces at the international arena to continue to lobby for rights of children in this region. Our work in Kajiado, as I had already mentioned, uh, there's, there's Kajiado, there's Marsabit, and there's Garissa, where we mainly um, advocate against FGM and early marriage. And these have been um, rampant in the, in the course or in the existence of the COVID-19, especially when schools were closed. And so um, I would say that work has gone up, but there's really so much to do going by the statistics that have been exposed in the media. We have not forgotten about the work that we do in Homa Bay County in regard to education that we have been able to empower to enable teachers and other school administrators to be able to participate in the management of schools effectively to ensure that the funding that is available is used economically. 
Of course, as I've already mentioned, COVID-19 has presented new challenges. We have been able to adopt. It has not been easy, but our work has continued and abated. And we want to thank our development partners uh, who have supported us through all the time that we have had uh, the pandemic. They have ensured that work has continued, but staff are also taken care of because staff are the ones that make everything or all the work that we do possible. Uh, on this occasion, I also take uh, this opportunity to actually announce that we have decided that we are going regional, and that is something that is big. Um, as East African Center for Human Rights, many people uh, read our name and think uh, of us as a regional organization, but this time we are actually going regional to engage not only in Kenya, but also in our neighboring country, Uganda and Tanzania. For all the work that we have done, for the strategic direction that we take, we are indebted to our development partners who have believed in us, who have trusted us with funds to enable us keep the work going. Our impact continues to be felt uh, throughout the country and beyond through the various policies that we have contributed to the making of, both through sending of memoranda, uh, memoranda to the parliament, as well as through lobbying and advocacy with members of parliament and even beyond. Our newest partner is uh, the Parliamentary Caucus on uh, SDGs, with whom we are looking to uh, partner to work at the regional level, and we are very excited about this new venture. With those few remarks, allow me to take you through the report. Um, uh, the, the report that is going to be launched just a few minutes from now, I will just go to um, the various of, uh, sections and of interest at the programs that we run at the East African Center for Human Rights. Uh, there's the Education Support Project, whose work has been explained in uh, page seven and page eight of this of this particular document. Uh, page eight, sorry, page nine of the of this. Um, report talks about the strategic plan that is the strategy that, the, that guides the East African Center for Human Rights in all its working. Um, page 28 provides for the percentage of distribution of programmatic activities across the pillars of those uh, strategic plan as of the, of the strategic plan. And page 29 is an illustration of the partners that we have. And on been engaging with us, you may be surprised to find, uh, if you've been engaging closely with us, you may be surprised to find your picture there. And page uh, 32 provides for our organogram, which um, uh, illustrates the uh, flow of authority or flow of power within the organization. And page 33 is a profile of the various um, members of, of our board, that is board of directors at the East African Center for Human Rights who offer strategic direction for the organization. So you will be able to see what, um, what their qualifications are, what are their experiences and what do they bring, or what rather what they bring to the table when it comes to providing strategic direction for the organization. And finally, um, the report ends with the senior management team. That is at page 35. We believe that uh, human resource at the organization is a key component of getting results. And so um, at that page 35, you will be able to look to have a look at the various uh, management officers or managers that we have at the, at, the, at the organization and be able to understand in terms of academic qualifications and also various experience that enables them to carry out their mandate. So um, the report will be shared with us um, at a later time. And so I would like to give back um, the program to Marcelino, our very able MC, so that he can direct us on what to do next. So feel most welcome, our partners who are online, our friends who are online and everyone who is here. Thank you once again for taking your time, braving, would I say braving the traffic and braving um, difficult circumstances provided by COVID to be here. I thank you very much and I hope that we are going to have a fruitful engagement. Thank you. Uh, so let's uh, give another round of applause. Yes, uh, 
have been requested by our comms officer. Uh, when you see her coming around to take the photograph, it's okay to lower your mask so that you can have the benefit of uh, <laughs> of both of both versions of you. Eh? Others, you look like uh, you permanently. Would you not? It's not a hijab controversy. Eh? So just do that little favor for us, uh, Martin. Eh? <laughs> yeah. So that at least we have both versions nowadays. Uh, we are trying to keep everybody safe, but we've got also got social distancing in the room. Yes, and that is the nature of COVID. I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, two of our community partners, representing our community partners. We call them community liaisons with the Right to Education program. Uh, Winnie Jerry, just wave. That's Winnie. And then there is uh, Eugenia Kello, who has also joined us. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. Uh, it's right. It's right to not be where it is uh, without our community uh, partners. Let me say it's good for us to be here. There's this African saying that goes that uh, when kinsmen are invited to sit together, it's not because uh, they are starving in their homes or when they sit around to have a meal at night, uh, watching and uh, looking at the moon, it's not that they could not see the moon from their homesteads. It is just the African thing to do. And you know, COVID has robbed us our, 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 the opportunity to be together. So I think I would really want us to revel in the fact that we are here together for those who are, who are here physically. It's a very unique opportunity. Uh, we as each right staff, we rarely see each other. We have been working remotely. So this is quite a, a wonderful moment and a good break for us. Uh, and I'm happy to be here. There are people I've not seen for a very long time. So let us appreciate the moment. And uh, as we go along, drinks are also being served. So at this juncture, I want to welcome a, a colleague and also a, a young man. I normally like uh, saying uh, the guy with the baritone voice. <laughs> I, I wish to welcome Cloud so that he can take us through the next phase of the program. Let's give him a round of applause as he, as he joins me here. Thank you, um, Marcelino. My name is Claude Kandem. I work uh, at East African Center for Human Rights and uh, the Education Support Program as the project assistant. And I'll, within the next few minutes, just share a little about each rights. As you might have heard Dr. Olo mention, it is only last month that the organization celebrated 11 years. So we have existed uh, for 11 years. We are a regional, non-governmental, non-partisan organization that does advocacy around economic, social, and cultural rights as provided for under Article 43 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. So it is passed on to the realization that there was not enough and sufficient advocacy as relates to this particular right that the organization was formed and has for the last 11 years engaged in research, engaged in building collaborations and partnerships, engaged in advocacy, and engaged in capacity building and creation of awareness on economic, social, and cultural rights, as well as other rights that relate to, that, to those particular rights. So we have two key programs that are run and uh, each right, and we have the first program is the education support program. And the education support program is a program that does or that is focused on the right to education, particularly for vulnerable and marginalized groups with specific focus on children from urban informal settlements. And so we do a lot of work be it partnerships, as you can see, our community members are here. They are the ones that make it possible on the ground. So we have partnerships, we create awareness, 
and we engage with advocates uh, we engage in advocacy uh, policy influencing policy creation and do all that just so that we have education that is accessible education that is adaptable education that is acceptable and education that is available we also have watotoweto project and watotoweto project focuses on three key components the first is child protection and then we have access to quality or to basic quality education and we have protection of children and in this regard particularly young girls against harmful practices and that is female uh, genital mutilation and so the focus areas or the areas where this program is run is mainly uh, Garissa, Marsabit and Kajiado and a lot of work has been done. I'm sure you'll be able to see some of this work in the report that is being launched but this information is also available on our website and on several other platforms. So having said that, just to play two short films, we shall start with the Nielimisha film, which will give a bit of insight into the work that is done by the education support program, after which we shall play the next film, and I will cede the floor. Thank you. Come on, you're going to show a blue, so they gray, and I've got a black. Kwa 
chile chile ya zirgale kwa mbi ya makati ya hapa tika kwa tumia faidika kwa peleka watoto lakini ya hiyo mwanda tupe kwa hake na wale wa kudekwa jenga na hiyo hapa ni chiba na hiyo wa jimu lesa ni mwereka ni wachache na watoto na kwa uwingi kudekwa wa jimu is largely a low fee status and in this center people pay as they could afford yeah because we've not set our uh, fee standards here because we have all classes of people and uh, i think this is where the lowest people in the community uh, still will be found who are made to reinforce because as you can see this is uh, we have an upper floor so we were made to reinforce from the lower floor. So we made a thorough reinforcement with strong steel, dug, dug about two weeks deep into the ground. Then so give the, the upper floor support. After that, we were made because before they started coming, we were using um, the lower, the ground floor. We were not building church, so we were using it and we didn't have partitions. So we also went to the went to the extent of working on partitions, as I hope you can see now. After the partition had uh, some uh, several changes, yeah, and so the infrastructural changes in instructions has been extensive in this school as we are to open this year. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Let's be active. Are you getting me? some areas were the final demarcation for uh, uh, demolition then they will create roads labda pengine wa create mambo ya markets mambo ya public schools lakini wakati liwekwa unapata kwamba wale wanataka kwa kijiji kwa sababu unapata kwamba wame inhabit the whole kijiji mpaka unapata kwamba roads hakuna hapo hata nafasi ya roads wale kata haiko mweko kwa plan hata kidogo yes kuna area moja nilikuwa mambo ya market kwa wale kwa market Roads sana sana kwa na major on, but mashule no, kwa na blessing ni kwa na mashule. Mama, uzalisha kuna hapa kwa sisi. Takwa sisi sana. Mr. Mayor, Junior. If I could uh, advise, I would have said uh, the class should be child friendly. Uh, generally the school should be child friendly what do i mean by child friendly i mean uh, the the school should have uh, classrooms which are spacious to to hold the 100 students and also they should have toilets enough for the children then also the locality uh, should be 
uh, secure. Yeah, that's, that ratio should be like uh, one to thirty or one to forty. Yes.
three people just quickly before we play the next film by Watoto Wetu on what comes out as very striking or pertinent from that particular film. Uh, anyone? We're not very many. You can just raise your hand or just uh, uh, give your point. Maybe I could give my first point. Um, I remember I've just noted what the teacher said that it is important for every child to go to school, but it is not important for them to score 100%. And I remember one thing that my high school principal used to say, and I remember up to date, and I think it's very true. He used to say that education is what remains after everything you've learned in school has been forgotten. After everything you've learned in school, after how to calculate moles, after how to find the diameter and perimeter of whatever, that which is left, that is what education is. And that is why it is important to make sure that every child who has attained school going age, no matter their physical, no matter their economic, no matter what circumstances that they get to school, they get to interact with others, they're able to be mentored, they're able to be taught, and they're able to learn, regardless of where their school is. And that is what we do at the Education Support Program, advocate that and say that education that is accessible, education that is quality, education that will develop and change a nation can only truly be provided by the state. We have no problem with state actors, but if we have 1 million private schools and we should have 10 million public schools, and those public schools should have enough teachers who are adequately trained and should have enough resources to cater for each and every child, regardless of their circumstances, including those who might be challenged physically. So any other point, one or two, and then we play the next film. Yes, Samantha. Um, thanks, Claude. I think one thing that was very clear for me was that um, the gap or the lacuna left where there is no quality free public education leads to so much room for exploitation of lower or um, low earning communities. I think just looking at some of the backgrounds of some of the schools that we were just shown in the film, <clears throat> and also some of the facts that were being stated, like seven students were killed when such um, you know, school collapsed. I think it just it also it just bolsters the importance of the work that ESP does and each rights in, in such communities. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Any one more, one more? Anyone? Dr. Olo? or um, a pool of water going to school, how dangerous it is and how their parents are worried about how they will get to school. So access, there's physical access and then there's that kind of access. True. So the safety of children while on their way to access schools is also an issue. Thank you. And it is, it is a real issue and it is a live issue. And the interesting thing is when you just do a bit of desktop research, you find that there's policies, there's laws, there's guidelines addressing all these issues. They say that safety of a student begins when they leave home. So there's what should be done on their way to school when they're in school and after. But how many kids do we lose every year, every month when it's raining and there's floods on their way to school, at school or on their way home? Yeah, so we continue and we are committed to advocating and we shall not relent and we shall not stop until we get there. Um, the next one by Watoto Wetu.
Uh, the East African Center for Human Rights works in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, and our mission is to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights in Africa through partnerships, capacity building, and knowledge management. The East African Center for Human Rights was set up after a research revealed that uh, civil and political rights were given more preference than our economic, social, and cultural rights, and therefore it was, it was established to stand in the gap providing for children who are a marginalized part of our community. Our work revolves around right to health, right to education, as well as child protection. Now, our Tutuetu project is one of our main projects that is implemented within Kenya, and specifically in three counties, that is Mansabit, Kajiado, and Garissa. Our work, especially in Kajedo County, has been quite significant that saw the rolling out of a policy or a county policy on anti-FGM. And in the long run, we tend to see that that policy is actually rolled out countrywide. The education support program enhances equitable access to quality basic education for all children and particularly the marginalized, as outlined in international and regional treaties and national law. This has been through policy engagement, partnerships, research, evidence-based advocacy, capacity building, and the consistent equipping of communities to demand their right to quality education. And use the chat feature and just uh, drop a text um, and then we'll be able to read out your comment or to answer any question that that, that you might have All right. So, general and um, question: What three? What are the key areas on which uh, the Watotoetu project, or in which the Watotoetu project works? Anyone? I want, I'm looking at this desk where we have our community people. I can see Noah. I can see Eugene. I'd love to hear from any of them. What do we do? Uh, Kajiado, that's one of the counties. Another one. What do we do is not in Homa Bay. ESP. ESP in the <laughs> Yes. ESP in the Bay. Uh, another one. Another county. Kajiado. You know, there are counties when you think of Kajiado, there are others that also just come to mind. If you try one of those, I'm sure you'll be, you'll be correct. <laughs> Any other? Uh, one of the counties neighboring Turkan. You're, you're very close. You're still very close. You're almost there. Yes. Marsabit. Another one. Another one. It's one of the it's one of the big counties on that end towards the far north. Yes. Yes, Garissa. Garissa. And then we said we have uh, three focus points. One is education, the other two, not ESP, but Watotowetu. So Watotowetu is the one that works in Marsabit. 
Garissa and Kajado, what is a what is a prominent, what is a pertinent issue and still remains a pertinent issue in that part or in those parts of the country? Anyone? FGM, yes. So that's what we are referring to. Uh, we engage in a lot of work and advocacy against uh, harmful cultural practices and just changing these people's perspective and, and getting them to realize how harmful that is to those girls. So we have FGM. Another one that comes right after FGM, as I see the floor, another one. There's a question online. Okay. So Kennedy Oyer from Homer Bay County, he's saying what comes to mind after watching the Nearly Misha film is the need for government being responsive when it comes to meeting constitutional obligation when, it's, when it comes to realization of human rights constitutional obligations and the realization of human rights. Thank you, Ken Oyer. He's uh, a very instrumental person that we work with in Homer Bay. And um, I, have a, I have a number of lawyers, all my seniors in the room, and I'd love to hear, there's, there's a certain decision that was uh, given recently by the Supreme Court with regard to one, one card that is always pulled by the government when it comes to realization of certain rights. And the government always says, oh, this realization of these rights should be progressive. But uh, I'd love to hear with humility from one of my seniors or anyone else uh, on what the Supreme Court had to say about that in a recent decision. Yes, Samantha, I see the floor with humility. <laughs> Hello, uh, okay, thank you, Claude. Um, so basically there was a medical practitioner called Dr. Tatu Kamau who sought um, the court, you know, the court to rule that uh, the prohibition against um, FGM Act 2011 was unconstitutional and specifically section, section 19 of that act. Um, the prohibition of FGM Act criminalizes several aspects of FGM in section 19. It specifically talks about practitioners, but it goes on all the way up to section 29, speaking about people who um, aid in ca the carrying out of FGM, aid practitioners, and also people who discriminate against people who have had FGM carried out against them. It's quite a progressive piece of legislation. And that was the crux or rather the issue um, that was raised primarily in Tatu Kamau's um, petition to the court. And that escalated quickly from the high court all the way to the Supreme Court, which is quite surprising because common sense would dictate that FGM is something that is you know, detrimental and it has no benefits whatsoever, medical, physiological, mental, at least as of now, up all the years that FGM has existed, no benefit has been identified. So basically, Kamau was saying that the constitution, the, the Kenyan constitution is, is not expressly against FGM. The basis of her argument was that the constitution actually bolsters the right to culture because it recognizes culture in the preamble. It recognizes the need for culture in article 11 in Article 22, in Article, uh, in the Bill of Rights. And therefore that, is, that, that was, the, and also in Article 55 that talks about, um, rather sorry, Article 43, that talks about ECOSOC rights and specifically the right to health and that no one should be discriminated on that basis, inclusive of children or women who have undergone FGM. And the Supreme Court ruled that, first of all, FGM has no benefit, no, no known benefit. Number two, Kenya is already signatory to regional instruments and international instruments that expressly prohib prohibit FGM, such as CEDAW, um, the yeah. And number three, and uh, number three, the Supreme Court also ruled that uh, you know FGM is a contravention of so many rights in the Bill of Rights, yeah, as uh, Chapter Four of the Constitution, and therefore just just briefly. That is what the Supreme Court, that, 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 is the, that is a brief summary of the Supreme Court's position on that matter. 
Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. And that, that one has now bearing on what to way to. And there was another that was also as uh, very important. And the question is, then can progressive realization of certain rights within the Bill of Rights, such as economic, social, and cultural rights, be used as an excuse for neglecting? For example, we can see some of these things are a direct consequence of neglect, non-involvement uh, non or just lack of interest uh, by the government. And I think there was also a decision with regard to that. And I think, Samantha, you also wrote an opinion piece uh, with regard to that. I think that was a Mito Bell case. Yeah. And I think that was the last judgment that was given on the day that uh, the retired Chief Justice retired. And there was also a piece on that. I think it's on our, on our website. And so Samantha wrote a very informative piece. And it was published in the newspaper on, on progressive rights and what the Supreme Court held with regard to the realization of those rights, despite them being progressive. Thank you very much. And I now beg to cede the floor to Marcelino. Yes, uh, let's give uh, Cloud another round of applause. Yes, so I'm back in the podium. Uh, before, we, for, before we proceed any further, I want to recognize the presence of a few guests who have joined us both virtually and physically. I'll begin with our virtual guest. I wish, I wish to recognize the presence of our board chairperson, Mr. Isaac Okero. Let's give him a hand. I know he's there virtually. Uh, we also have uh, Peter Mokaya. Um, and then uh, Kennedy O'Year, who even asked a question. Kennedy happens to be one of our partners in Homa Bay. They are instrumental part and partners of our right to education program. And then uh, we've got also staff who have joined us online. They were otherwise committed. We've got Ben Omilo and Fresia Kagu, who have also joined us online. They're following these proceedings. And then physically here with us, a friend of each rights, somebody whom I'm meeting for the first time physically, Dr. Johnston Kuya from the Royal Netherlands Embassy, just wave. Noah Dulo Adipo, one of our community liaisons again from the community. Yes, uh, that's about it. In case I've forgotten anybody, then uh, I'll, uh, you let me know. Now, uh, Sharon, you are, uh, you are here. One of the things I wanted us to uh, discuss, we're, we're expecting uh, Mweshimwe to come, was the issue of uh, uh, gender balance in parliament. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, you'll pass on this message to him that unlike parliament, which has got uh, issues eh, with the gender balance, uh, each rights, uh, is doing each, each right is doing as well as Rwanda. Each right is powered by women, <laughs> led by our CEO. So each right has got a lot of female staff. So I think you, you take that message to Moshimiwa that uh, uh, here we are, each right is a, is a space where we respect constitutional provisions, although they're also becoming a threat, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> now, uh, I now want to introduce the next speaker. Oh yes, I forgot to also to recognize the presence of uh, our communications uh, officer. That is uh, Oliver Seno, who is at the back. She's been busy. She's put this activity together. Let's give her a hand. I now want to introduce uh, the next speaker who is uh, our board, uh, member of the board of directors and founding trustee. He's called Gilbert Onyango. Uh, I'll give a short profile before he comes here. <laughs> I know he was not expecting that. Gilbert is very shy. Uh, so Gilbert is uh, a lawyer by profession, got an LLB, uh, advocate of the High Court of Kenya. But like many other people from his side of the region, uh, it appears 
accumulating knowledge is, uh, is a calling, is a vocation. So with that in mind, uh, Gilbert did not just stop there. He actually has served, he worked as a regional deputy director for the Canadian Bar Association uh, in Dar es Salaam. He's been a regional director of Each Rights. He's a regional director of UPR Info. And uh, Gilbert also has uh, a master's of science degree in management and organizational development, and also a master's of arts degree in development studies with a major in human rights, development and social studies. So, and you can see our CEO is, you can see our CEO is also a doctor. Uh, me, I only have a Bachelor of Arts degree in anthropology. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so with those few remarks, I want to take this opportunity to, well, let's give him a round of applause as he comes over to make his remarks. Gilbert Onyango Karibusana. Yes, feel most welcome. Thank you so much, Marcelino. Um, I'm usually not one given to, to such accolades. They don't belong to me. I think they belong to somebody else. Um, to the representative of our chief guest, Dr. Otinda Amola being ably represented by my colleague in the legal profession, uh, who is also working in the farm of Rachir and Amolo and uh, assisting counsel for Dr. Amolo in parliament, Madam Sharon Makoriwa. To our brother from uh, the Royal Dutch Embassy, Dr. Ari Karibu, it's a pleasure meeting you. To Madam CEO, Dr. Lo, to all our partners, uh, development partners present, our colleagues in the uh, NGO sector, my brother Nyangori, who have been with the whole day today, and our colleagues also from the community to the staff of Each Rights. I want to greet you all. Good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Gilbert Onyango. I have the pleasure, I'm quite humbled when people call me founder of uh, Each Rights. I, I always say, sometimes I think it's somebody else. And especially when you see an organization that uh, started off as an idea being what it is today. It's quite humbling. I stand in front of you, not that I'm any special compared to the other people or to anybody, not more special than our chair, who I know is online, but could not make it due to other reasons and who has been very dedicated to this organization for the last 11 years when we started the idea of setting up the organization. I'm not any more special compared to the other board members and the other trustees and Madam Christine is in um, Juba and I know she's following and it's a group of people that I'm very proud of and especially uh, I, I feel quite honored to have been able to, to work with them for the last 11 years. Now, one may ask, why did we start the East African Center for Human Rights? And um, the East African Center for Human Rights was started as a result of a challenge that was seen 
when it comes to the realization and the, uh, the realization of human rights in Kenya and the need to promote what was otherwise the orphan of human rights in this country. Very briefly, around 2007, we were working around um, issues of um, the National Action Plan and Policy on Human Rights. So one of the things that uh, we realized was that when we as civil society were asked to divide ourselves into groups. So one group was told, all those organizations that work on civil and political rights, please all move to this side. All the organizations that work on, on group on uh, economic and social rights, move on this side. All the organizations that work on group rights like Semiride and children's rights, those days I was working at Credo, please move on this side. So we're in a room in Nakuru. Yes, continue. We're in a room in Nakuru. I think it was, uh, it was Merika uh, Bontana. And one of the things that I noticed was that the group that was working on civil and political rights was full. Everyone was there. That's okay. The group that was working on group rights, where I was, because I was coming from the children's sector, was full. But the group that was working on economic and social rights only had about one or two people. Problem. It, it raised a question in my head and I kept asking myself, what, what is the issue? What is the issue? I had come from a background of, 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 of civil rights, particularly for children, where we're representing child victims of uh, violence. But this thing kept nagging me. And then of course the constitutional review process had already started. And um, we all know what happened in 2010, we had a new constitution. Now then going a step back, I started asking myself, why is it that we don't have the expertise to work on economic, social and cultural rights? Then it takes me back to our constitution. Our 1963 constitution only provided for civil and political rights. We were allowed to, to form political parties. We were allowed to form, um, to be members of, uh, to assemble. We could assemble anywhere. But then when it comes to, that's okay. When it comes to issues around social rights, issues around education, issues around provision of water, issues around health, they were looked at from a needs-based or a needs approach. And therein lies the problem. So that was the beginning of our Kenyan, my Kenyan experience when it comes to the realization or issues around economic, social, and cultural rights. So we have the 2010 constitution, which then makes it mandatory and makes um, economic and social rights, social cultural rights actionable. So there were these challenges, there was the Kenyan experience, and then the challenges when it comes to realizing economic and social rights, please proceed. So these challenges when it comes to realizing economic and social rights, made us, because we had a new constitution, we had very difficult questions that we needed to start asking ourselves. How do we re realize economic, social, and cultural rights? We have this new constitution that then provides us with justiciable, it's arguable whether it's justiciable or not, economic and social rights that are justiciable so that one could then go to court and say, my right to food has been violated. One would go to court and say, my right to water has been violated. My right to education has been violated and my right to health has been violated. So around 2011, 2012, we start seeing a flurry of cases. 
And one day we see Okio Mtata chaining himself um, outside the police headquarters. And the question then was, is that the best way to push for economic, social, and cultural rights? Do you use Hakietu to push for economic, social, and cultural rights? Haki when, for example, a school ground has been grabbed, yes, that is Hakietu. You can use Hakietu for that. Hakietu is when um, somebody has been arrested. Yes, you can use Hakietu for that. But can you use Hakietu to, to, to push for quality of education? Can you use Hakietu to push for accessibility of education? How do you hit the streets to say that, that, that the quality of education is not up to standard? So then that raised the challenge of how do we push for the realization of this right that was new in our constitution? So that presented an opportunity. The next one was that we were in a post-1993 era where all human rights, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, all human rights were now being treated equally. And that also presented an, a, an opportunity that needed to be exploited. Continue. Connected to that was that the government didn't know what it is that needed to be done when it comes to understanding the obligation of the state when it comes to the promotion of this real life, uh, of, of economic and social rights. Then there was the potential that was being brought about by the discussion around rights-based approaches to development. We're used to doing education from a developmental perspective, but now we needed to put on another hat and say education is a right, so let's move away from it being a token and let's push towards demanding for the realization of, or the promotion and protection of those rights. So that is when we decided to come up, a group of us decided to come up together um, uh, and develop this particular concept paper that has been the Bible of the East African Center for Human Rights. Please continue. So we decided to come up with an organization that will then exploit the gaps and opportunities that have presented themselves as, as, as I've stated, so that then we can utilize the existing systems that we have in the country. Number one being the new constitution. Number two being the, um, the optional protocol on economic, social and cultural rights, which was just, uh, which was adopted in 2011, and I was part of uh, lobbying for that optional protocol. And also the developments at the African Commission on Human and People's Rights, the developments of the African Committee on the Rights and Welfare of the Child, which was also new, because by the time in 2010, the African Committee on the Rights and Welfare of the Child had only entertained one case. So there was room to be able to, to start pushing for the realization of human rights, particularly economic, social, and cultural rights within those particular places. So come 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, we have a flurry of cases being filed in our constitutional court challenging various things. And now we have the Mitubel case. We, have, we, we, we had a shortage of, of, of judgments. I mean, a, a shortage of cases being sent to court. Right now, the cases have reduced and we need to start asking ourselves, and this is a challenge I'm throwing to, to, to each rights. What happened to public interest litigation? Each rights is an organization that needs to fight social injustice. And that is what we are doing. And I keep using my, my, my two little boys as an example. 
my boy who is picked from, uh, from home in the morning, driven to school, has tea break, has lunch, has four o'clock tea, is driven back home, has electricity, eats fancy food from fancy restaurants, should not be competing with that young girl who we saw, what was her name, uh, the lady, Aziza and Mwangi, right? It is just morally wrong for my boy who goes for tuition to compete with those young kids. It's morally wrong. That is social injustice. It is mor morally wrong for us to watch and say that, that, that Mukuru has only one public school. It is morally wrong for us to say that Kibra has what, three public schools maybe now? Primary public schools, three? Toy, Olympic, Ayani, only three. And the kids have to cross all day from Kibra to Milimani, which is almost four kilo three kilometers away, probably, in that mud. It is morally wrong. That is structural violence. Because the structure is made in such a way that that boy from Kibra, for him to have the opportunity to make it out of Kibra and be somebody, the chance is 50 times more difficult than for my boy. And my boy, if he, for whatever reason, is unable to make it through, I will probably look for money to take him to another school or to a university, a private university, it is morally wrong. Everyone needs to have an equal opportunity to education. Everyone needs to have an equal opportunity to help. Everyone needs to have an equal opportunity to realize their full potential and to live a life of dignity. Um, the video raise issues around the challenge when it comes to the realization of the right to education. And one challenge that has been placed is that a child does not have a birth certificate. How can a birth certificate stop a child from accessing education? Will the years wait? Will his age wait? I think this is something that is ripe for public interest litigation uh, to be able for us to, to, to challenge those particular structures that are there. And, and Dr. Terry, you raised something that even as that child travels to school or walks to school, there's an intersectionality of issues, security, safety, the question of distance, what is the minimum distance that a child should walk to be able to access education? Why should a child come all the way from, um, and I know somebody listening here uh, can attest to that, there's a child who actually lives um, beyond Aki River. There's a child who lives beyond Aki River. Um, I forget this, this place, uh, Supreme Homes. Supreme Homes. That is almost 20, 30 kilometers from Nairobi. That child comes all the way to Braeburn, which is across the city. They take almost three, four hours in traffic. And now with Mombasa Road as it is, of course, then they take more. Why, why would we punish a child to be picked from home at four o'clock in the morning and go back home at 10 p.m. Exactly. Teachers walking 20 kilometers. And the thing is, our policymakers and, and, and Ms. Sharon Makorewa, please, I, um, I, I know you, you're an able representative. 
these are the concerns we need for our, our policymakers to know, and my brother from, from parliament. These are the questions we need to know and the questions for which we seek answers. And some of these things, we cannot do them on our own. We need you, the policymakers, we need you, the people who are in those positions of, of, of power to be able to start seeing what Mwangi and Aziza goes through every day. Because when we drive in our vehicles, it is very easy for us to forget the challenges that those kids are going through. It's very easy for us to forget. The intersectionality of the challenge that people face to come from Kibra, to come from Wajia, to come from Garissa, to go to a public university and to become somebody is something that we cannot ignore. And as the East African Center for Human Rights, we are committed to fight for people. I know probably you could have launched this. I know one may ask the question, why are we in a five-star hotel? I know it's, 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 a, it's a valid question. Um, and it's a question that a lot of people use to, to bash. But the thing is, we have to start the fight somewhere. And we have to fight for an equal society or even if it cannot be equal, where there's equity and equal our citizens. I want to thank the, 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 the management and staff of the East African Center for Human Rights for picking up from where, where we, the people who uh, uh, left in that fire burning, uh, Dr. Ray and your team, Martin, and all the managers. We really appreciate the work you're doing. And I want to say this uh, on behalf of the chair of the board, you're doing an excellent job. And uh, having had a peek at the, the report, it's quite exciting, uh, the kind of work that you're doing. It makes me realize that uh, we are no longer useful um, in the organization. And, and we are, I must say, we are really proud to be part of, uh, of, of the transformation uh, of this country uh, that is going on um, in this country. I want to reassure the, the staff and management uh, of, of uh, the continued support of the trustees of the organization. Um, Madam Tina Lai, who's uh, currently watching us from Juba. Uh, Mr. Jimmy Hamba, who's in the UK. Myself, um, Rose, Intiani, and Evelyn are the five trustees. You have our full support. The board of directors, uh, our chair, uh, who is unable to be with us today, Mr. Isaac Okero, uh, Tien Okero, and of course, uh, Julie and uh, Florence. You have our full support uh, as, as the board of directors and trustees. And we are quite proud of you uh, and all the work that you're doing. So with those few and many remarks, I believe I've, uh, I've uh, challenged you enough. Um, I want to congratulate you and I look forward to re formally receiving uh, the report. Thank you for the time. God bless you. Say it loudly. Um, it is now my singular opportunity to welcome a friend of each rights. A lady who I've just met today, who I've also realized we, we've, uh, we have a lot in common. Um, we're just discussing uh, some streets and places uh, in some far lands far away. Somebody who has been uh, in the NGO sector, um, worked previously with Ford Foundation um, here in Kenya then also worked in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, also studied in New York University, 
an advocate of the High Court of No Mean Repute, uh, working at the firm of Achir and Amolo, and also working as assistant counsel for Dr. Amolo in Parliament. Madam Sharon Makoriwa has been sent to very ably represent Dr. Amolo today. And uh, we look forward to hearing what Dr. Tari, and now Sharon will ably own that speech, yeah, to be able to deliver the speech of uh, our chief guest. So please join me in welcoming Sharon Makoriwa, our chief guest for today. Thank you. Thank you, Gilbert. For a minute there, as he was introducing me, I was wondering who is he talking about? <laughs> he said he does not recognize himself. I completely did not recognize myself either. But anyway, it is indeed my pleasure and I believe um, my luck to have spent this afternoon with you as you launch your first annual report. I am here indeed to present uh, Honorable Dr. Tinde Amolo's speech. He really would have loved to be here and was actually the vicissitudes of the day, unfortunately, kept him away from, from being here with us. So I hope you will bear with me. I might not carry the charisma, the tone <laughs> of um, Dr. Amolo, but I certainly hope that the spirit and the heart of his message will come through. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, good afternoon or good evening. It is with great pleasure that I take part in this auspicious moment of the launch of the East Africa Center for Human Rights Annual Report 2020. I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation I am privileged to offer this keynote address. I am honored to believe, first, as a Kenyan who appreciates the role of civil society, second, as a long-serving member of civil society myself, and also as a member of parliament who sits in various committees that interact with civil society. In all those capacities, I have witnessed firsthand the important role that civil society organizations, including the East Africa Center for Human Rights, play in enhancing transparency and good governance in developing countries. And by contributing to increased public debate on the formulation and implementation of government policies. As I have learned, the East African Center for Human Rights sprung from very humble beginnings with just two staff members. And here we are 11 years later. Each rights has developed and positioned itself as the regional think tank on matters concerning children's rights. It has made an indelible mark in enhancing the realization of economic, social, and cultural rights in East Africa thanks to donors and partners who found their work and programs worthy, especially those geared towards benefiting vulnerable and marginalized groups. Each promotes the realization of the right to education in Kenya and East Africa. Each rights seeks to perfect the science of evidence-based advocacy and research, so as to ensure that all their programs are informed by the context and that interventions such as awareness creation, community engagement, policy reform, and public interest litigation answer to the needs of their constituents. The pandemic that is COVID-19 has had a negative impact globally, but children have been particularly affected severely. In Kenya, for example, reports of teenage pregnancies, child abuse, defilement, child labor and other atrocities against children have taken an upward trend. Even though daytime curfew has been lifted and schools have been reopened, one of the areas in which much work will be needed is the area of mental health. And civil society organizations in this regard can work with the respective government ministries to address these issues which have escalated during the pandemic. 
I am aware that each rights is already working with the parliamentary caucus on the sustainable development goals. And I hope that through this and other like-minded partnerships, civil society organizations and parliament can be able to do more for the children and people of our great Republic of Kenya. There's no limit to innovative ways that lawmakers and CEOs, CSOs can work together to uphold human rights. Because CSOs remain an essential building block of development and national cohesion. In a country blessed with peace and stability like ours, civil society fills the space that is untouched by government and the private sector. As Kenya celebrates its 58 years of independence, space in governance. In the recent past, CSOs appear to continue involved in analyzing processes relevant to the development agenda, sensitizing citizenry, and providing alternatives. But we especially must focus on processes of constitutional and legislative changes, budget making, oversight over public money, ability and close monitoring of political processes, including elections and referenda. Today, on this occasion, that is the launch of the East Africa Center on Human Rights Annual Report, I want to issue a rallying call to civil society organizations to focus, to think beyond resources, to think beyond pay slips, beyond technical and monitoring indicators, beyond burn rates, and to focus on uplifting the lives of the people. Civil society has done very well in the past and must endeavor for deeper engagement to help achieve transparency and good governance in Kenya. I thank you. And if I may add my own comments, just having been inspired from the presentation of your work, um, one quote came to mind, which is by Margaret Mead, who said that, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. And I thank you for all the work that you're doing. Uh, let's give uh, Wakili another round of applause. Yes, uh, we thank you for your comments. We thank you for representing Mazee, and uh, we'll respond to the challenge. Yeah. Martin, we have been asked to think beyond the bandits. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I hope everybody in the room is listening. Sometimes we get caught up with uh, all these technical monitoring evaluation indicators. Uh, I want to recognize the guests who joined us virtually as, uh, as uh, we, our chief guest was making her remarks. And that is Ms. Clarice Oganga from the UN uh, Office of the High Commission on Human Rights. Let's give a rallying call for where she is. I really want to appreciate the virtual audience in these days when people are tired of, uh, uh, you know, Zoom can be quite exhaustive. Uh, uh, they've been patient with us. And so we want to thank you for that. Now the next item on the agenda, we are coming to the end of our program. I'm invite, I want to invite Dr. Tari, Dr. Olo, two things. I want to recognize the staff of each right, to introduce them personally, they can come in from so that you can uh, appreciate them for the good work that they have been doing, which I think is a special touch. And then after that, she'll proceed to do for the highlight of the event, which is basically uh, launching the annual report. Uh, we should stand advised on the logistics around that. So Dr. Alo, Karibu once again to the podium. Thank you. 
good evening once again. Over a very, very fast. Gilbert has said mouth that uh, he appreciates the work that we do and that makes us really really proud i feel like i'm 20 kgs bigger now since he said it <laughs> and i am I'm sure that staff feel big as well because everyone is um elated when they are appreciated so yes um maybe i would call um each right staff to come to the front if that's okay so that i can introduce them before we go to the um, because I know that uh, we will get disorganized somehow. So if we can do that, Olive, Pachu. Valerie, everyone. Chef, we have the, the whatever microphone. Or oh, you can just see. <clears throat> Yes, so um, thank you very much, uh, my dear colleagues. Everything that we have done, everything that we see today is because of the um, dedication and work that we have put in our work, the passion that is burning both um, actually from all staff. Everyone has been able to do their work for everything to happen the way it has happened today. So I'll begin in no particular order. Um, on my on the, the first person here is Martin. You have a microphone, so you can say your name okay. and your role. Thank you. See you. Um, as you've heard, I'm a member of each night staff, and my name is Martin Utina. I'm the finance and operations manager, who tries as much as I can to convince staff on the best ways of using resources, so that we can continue getting funding from the partners that we associate with. Thank you so much for attending this uh, occasion. You're most welcomed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening once again. My name is Claude Candem. I am the project assistant in the education support program. Uh, Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Thomas Kandem. And I'm an intern with Education Support Program. Thank you, Thank you again. Uh, good evening once more. My name is Masalino Waithaka Foku. When I'm not MCing, I manage the Watototo project. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Pachu Ibrahim, Office Assistant. Thank you, Pachu. Good evening to you all. Good evening. My name is Samson Mutanke. I work as a finance officer. Each rights. So when Dr. Tiende was talking about ban rates, I highly suspect he was talking to Mutangi. <laughs> He's the ban rates guy. That's a good wake up call again. Thank you, Kariboni. Thank you. Good evening. My good name evening. is Samantha Oswago. I'm the legal officer at Each Rights, and I also offer support to Marcelino in the Watutuetu project. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Valerie Karigedo, and I'm an intern with the Education Support Program. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Valerie and, uh, and Olive were able to do so much so for today to happen. If you found your gift very nicely wrapped, know that uh, Valerie and Olive are responsible for that. Olive, um, do you want to introduce yourself? <clears throat> My name is Oliver Seno. I'm the communications officer at Each Rights. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Olive. Thank you all staff for the work that you do. Yes, yeah, so now we come to the main agenda, which is the, um, the launch of the report. And... Um, Yeah, so we have the um, report here, and I would like to invite uh, Gilbert, as well as Sharon, or the representative of um, Honorable Lutinde Amolo, to come to the front. 
Parliament has no left. Yeah, may I also invite um, Kuyo Johnston? Please join us, as well as Daniel. <clears throat> so what is that? Are we cutting something? We are now going to cut the ribbon. Okay. Um, so understand what we're supposed to do. There's supposed to be the cutting of the ribbon. Uh, I think special occasions call for extraordinary measures and risks. <laughs> <laughs> For two seconds, I think you can ask. I hope you have uh, the appliances. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Good. So I think uh, as we proceed, uh, as we do that, I'm sure there will be some uh, <laughs> as they are called. Eh? Yes, so yes, yeah, so maintain the distance. Perfect. You'll be the first person to be cutting a ribbon from distance in Kenya today. <laughs> so let us proceed. Let's give a hearty clap. Yes. <laughs> Uh, that is that is the first bone. That's the first annual report ever, <laughs> and we will definitely be producing more. Yeah. So now uh, we unpackage it. So what we can pose with it? Yes. Doctor Lo, apart from being an academician, she's also a very competent mother. As you can see, she's doing it very well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, our camera people, yes, uh, yes, great, uh, you have done the photos, or you want me to do it again so that you can smile? <laughs> Santa Sana. So that's okay. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah, that was a launch. Now I think we have some give uh, before we go uh, uh, before we do the closing remarks. I think we can do it. Okay. Yeah. So before we do the closing remarks, Dr. Lowe will do that. I think it's good that uh, we have some special uh, gifts for our guests. So once again, uh, that exercise will be handled by Valerie. Yeah. Yes, I'm informed that uh, yeah, at this stage you are going to have our guests receive their gifts, but as people are leaving, you have a chance to pick. There's a gift pack for everybody. So once we close with the closing remarks, as you leave, as you go for your cocktails, please pick your gift pack. Yes, go ahead. Can I say something? Yeah. Now, there was something I, I didn't, uh, I probably forgot to mention, but which Madam Sharon has just uh, also brought to my attention once again. How many of us think that those videos were excellent? 
I, I think they're quite powerful, right? Yeah. Madam Sharon has requested that she be availed to those videos. I would suggest that perhaps you look for an opportunity to play those videos in parliament. I don't know whether that's possible. I don't know. I, I think I think uh, with the team from uh, our brother from uh, Parliament, we need to avail that video to them, and also to Muheshimia, uh, we need to avail that video to them. Um, if we can seek support to have that video even shown on Al Jazeera or even on BBC. I believe it is possible. I, I believe it is possible. It is something that we need to consider because that video particularly, the, uh, they, they, they say a lot more than anything that someone will be able to read on a paper. So look for money, have that video aired in the mainstream media. Have it aired even on KBC, have it aired on KTN, have it aired in international media. It's a very, very powerful video. So that's the thing that the challenge that I want to throw back to, to the staff. I hope I'm... Okay. So I've made it public. <laughs> okay. So now with this, uh, at this junction, we're going to have a presentation of our gifts to our chief guests. Presentation of the gifts to our chief guests. Then uh, another announcement after the closing remarks, before we leave, uh, we are going to have a group photo for everybody here. So we are going to arrange ourselves and have a group photo here in front. Yeah, that's what I've been informed by our... And thank you for the team from... Uh... Huh? Bliss yeah, Bliss Mill. Bliss Media. Bliss Media. Yes, Bliss Media, Bliss Media. We appreciate uh, the good work that you're doing for us. Uh, this live stream thing was wondering how it would come to, but uh, I've learned a few things today. So, time for gifts. Are we ready, Valerie? Just a minute. One, uh, two minutes. Eh? So, in the meantime, you can be socializing as well, because either way, uh, we need to give these gifts, then we do the closing remarks. But do we do the closing remarks? And, uh... Let's start with the gifts. So you can take a moment to mingle as we wait for the next phase. So, uh, at this stage, uh, I'll invite Dr. Law to present uh, gifts, first of all, to the chief guest, uh, Sharon, thereafter the chairman of the uh, founding trustee and member of the board of directors and also board of trustees, Gilbert. And then, the, as I said, we are going to have, uh, then we are going to have closing remarks. After closing remarks, we are going to have a group photo. And as we then, after, we, after the closing prayers, we proceed uh, for the cocktail, which will be by the poolside. We are going to collect our... Uh, yeah, we're going, sorry. So I've been told to stand here. Now, we are seeing that we have the gifts right now being presented to the chief guest and the chairman of the... A board of trustees, and then after that, we are going to have the closing remarks and then a group photo. So, Dr. Ayla, you'll have to stand here for the because of the college, uh, in fact, on the podium. Yeah, makes it easier. Yeah, podium. 
Okay. So it was very nice to meet you. I uh, will relay the message that uh, the current sent a very able representative. And I want to believe that we have made one more friend, right? So you're officially a friend of each other. Here are two gifts, one for the one for the Thank you. Thank you, sir. And of course, the mandatory pose and photo. Thank you very much. Santa Sana. Yes, um, the other one goes to the go back to the okay. Fine, we know now. Okay. So the gift now goes to. <laughs> so we are going to have a gift for Dr. Johnson Kuya, a representative from the Royal Netherlands Embassy. Let's give him a hand, Azzy. Nice to meet you. What a surprise. Hey, Santa Let's give him, give him a round of applause. Yeah, we have to, uh, there's a photo opportunity. Mm -hmm. I assume you are in state house. <laughs> yes. Good. So now I'll hand over the microphone to Dr. Lo to do. Is there one more gift? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. One more gift. And uh, this is this gift goes to the Daniel Shikoli, our newest uh, partner for the from the Secretariat uh, Secretariat of the. Uh, Kenya Parliamentary Caucus on SDGs and Business. Let's give him a round of applause. Santa Sana. Good. Thank you. So, is there any gift? If it is, it will be given. Yeah. You know, I'm also mandated to break, to break protocol. Uh, the, the next gift, which uh, Gilbert, uh, Gilbert, you are authorized to hand it over to Mama. Yes. You want to go? <laughs> so let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, yes, a photo opportunity. Yeah, we should never forget our pioneers. Another round of applause. Yes, uh, Dr. Law, you remain on the podium. I'll give you the microphone to do the closing remarks. Yeah. Yes. Good evening once again. And just like that, we've come to the end of today's program. If you didn't get a gift, please don't be sad. There's always another day here. So I'd like to offer my round of appreciation for, to all our guests who came in today. Uh, I'll just call a few names, um, beginning with uh, the representative of our honorable chief guest, Dr. Otiende Amolo, Madam Sharon Makorewa, who now by her own title is a friend of each rights. Thanks for your very able representation, for your suggestions on how to escalate the work that we do. We appreciate that it's coming from a good spirit, a spirit of support. Please pass our humble gratitude to Dr. Otinde Amolo. And I hope you felt uh, at home. I hope you felt uh, welcome, even though we are meeting for the, for the first time. Asante Sana. 
To our development partners, I'm aware that it's a, a holiday in Uganda today. It's St. Matthias Day. Um, and I know that because we are a regional organization, right? Yes, so um, Eric Kakande could not be, sorry, Edward Kakande could not be here with us today. Uh, neither could he be online because of the same reason, but he sends his regard and um, his very unsupport uh, to this launch for today's program. Uh, well Springs Philanthropic Fund have supported us in all the work that we do, and we appreciate them. OSF, who sent their solidarity statement, we appreciate that as well. Now, coming to Friends of Each Rights, I would like to start with the representative uh, of the UN Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, Madam Clarice Oganga. Thank you so much for finding time to be with us today. Representative from the Royal Embassy of the Netherlands, uh, Johnston Kuyo, Asante Sana Kwakuja. Representative from the Law Society of Kenya, they are not here, but they are virtual. I know that um, uh, Madam Faith of the Ambo is online, as well as Corey, uh, Collins Harrison of the Ambo. Asante Nisana for making time. Representatives from Save the Children, Plan, TDH. Aga Khan Foundation, Cynthia, was with, uh, Cynthia Onyango was to be with us, uh, but she could not make it because of traffic. Uh, we thank you. Our CSO partners, I can see Semiride, Parliamentary Committee um, on SDG, as uh, well the Parliamentary Caucus on SDGs. Um, I thank you for making time to be with us today. Um, our partners from community or community liaisons, Asante Nisana for coming. I think um, most of you we have met before and the, list, the, lit, the latest um, meeting was the one at the liaison training. And some of your very, very beautiful pictures have made their way into our report. We appreciate you so much. And uh, of course, to our very able board of directors, um, they have offered transactions that are every decisions um, that they have made is what has culminated into what you see today. Can we give a round of applause to our board of directors? <laughs> represented by Gilbert here, but represented by um, Christina Lai online, as well as our chair who is online. Some of them have sent their apologies, but they are here with us in spirit. We thank you so much. And last but not the least, my dear colleagues, um, you make work not just work, but also interesting. It is um, always a pleasure to work with you. We grow together, we try new things together, we succeed together. Occasionally we fail, but most of the time we succeed together, right? A round of applause for staff of each rights. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I also like to thank, um, of course, the Hilton Hotel for providing this venue for us, and also our, our um, party, uh, partners from the media, Bliss Media, right? Thank you so much for offering this live stream. Our event has been successful as a result of concerted efforts of everyone who is here today. I can't thank you enough. God bless you as you go home. May you be successful in all that you set out to do. Thank you. I, 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 Madam CEO. Oh. Yeah. I want to have a look. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for, for your support. I wish you had made enough for the entire time to make of this. Video. Clap for the lady in green. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Asante. All right, so uh, that marks the end of our um, session for today. Um, back to the MC. Thank you. Let's uh, give a round of applause. So uh, we're going to have a group photo right now, after which... Uh, Martin has graciously uh, accepted to lead us in the closing prayer. <laughs> and then from there, we, we proceed as we pick our gift packs, then we go for the cocktail. So kindly, uh, all of us, let's come to the front. My will advise us how you want this taken. 
Do you need some suits? Okay. Okay, to um to friends of each rights who are watching us online. Uh, this is just to let you know that uh, the link to the launch will be sent to your emails or to whatever mode of communication that was used to, to, to send an invitation to you. Um, thank you so much for staying with us for the two hours that we've had. Thank you so much for your support. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. God bless you. Okay. Thank you so much, NMC, for giving me this opportunity to pray. So let us pray. Can I? Go? Okay, let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. You made it special, you made it wonderful for us to be together to launch our first report. I want to thank you for all the gifts you've given us, the gift of life, the gift of wisdom. I want to pray for those who are with us online and for those present and for those who are with us in spirit. We pray that you continue guiding us to the affairs of the East African Center for Human Rights, responsible for all the actions that we undertake and be able to 
create awareness among the communities and pray for their uh, for their welfare. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.